welcome to another episode of Design Theater. Today we're going to be looking at more concept artists, more illustrators, uh, specifically this guy that I found on ArtStation that just blew me away with his style and I wanted to take a look at it and, and take some notes on this guy's work and also promote it because I'm just a huge fan of, of this kind of stylistic art. And as usual, I'm going to mispronounce this guy's name. Georgi Georgiev. I'm assuming that's how it is that you say it. I apologize. If you've been watching this channel, you know I'm bad at pronouncing names. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's get into it. I got about 10 minutes of your time, so I want to look at some of this stuff. So, this guy's an illustrator, and as usual, I put any links that I found for his art station or any social media links it is that I find, I put those in the links or in the description below. And uh, this guy reminds me of some of the other artists that I've featured on this channel, uh, specifically Goji Wu, who I also mispronounced his name, <laughs> and I did a video on him and released it yesterday. Um, but this guy, he has a similar style, and he has a, a similar style to like Joe Mad, um, but then he also takes his own twist and turn on it. And I just, I really dig the super stylistic kind of drawing because that's that's more the direction it is that I like to draw so this is like a pretty straightforward image of a of a mage but there's a couple of things that stood that stuck out to me about this guy's work one specifically is the way that he uses different shapes as we go through the series of posts you'll see that there's there's certain shapes that he that he uses that you could say almost help define his style. And when I say that there's a style that's similar to Joe Mad, what he, he may, I'm sure he knows who Joe Mad is, but specifically the hands remind me of that because there's this kind of blocky kind of finger to it, right? He has these kind of blocky fingers, right? And you know you can see that there's less there's less straights going on here, uh, and then there's there's obviously this contrast between a straight and a curve on the fingers themselves, right? So if we take this off. Um, you know, if I traced out the whole hand, you would be able to see it better, but there's there's a specific kind of tapering that's going on with these shapes in the hand that I think aid to the design, right? Like they, the, all the fingers tend to taper downwards, which is a good, which is a good use of shape design. And then as they go away from the hand, they become wider, right? So they're like doing this kind of shape. You see that also in the hair, right? The hair is a little bit more obvious because you have these these long curves that come to a point, and then you can almost think of this as like a closed shape that comes back up. He also does a really good job of grouping uh, his different values together. You can tell that he's building up from a midtone, and then he's dropping in his darks along here. And then he's coming back over with some highlights. Oops. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. He's got some variety in his work too. I, I dig that. I dig any artist that's got variety in his work because it shows that he's experimenting, he's trying, he's doing different things, and uh, you know you can really see that in the way that he draws his characters. But then he also is doing like these environment designs, right? So even in a even in something like this, you can you can pull back and you can see how the compositional elements are arranged in a specific way in order to convey an idea. Because our job as illustrators or artists is to communicate something immediate, something effective, right? So we have the rule of big, medium, and small. So what is the big shape that's going on here? That, that is really setting the tone and the context for that. Well, I would argue that is the tree shapes here, right? 
And these tree shapes, they almost act as, as basically a way to hold. They're a space that holds these shapes, these house shapes, right? And notice that obviously there's this contrast. You have this desaturated blue background, and then you have this bright orange, which, I mean, it, it's really not that bright, but it feels very bright uh, compared to the background because there's that contrast there. And so it, it brings out the, the, the blue brings out the orangeness. That's what it means for something to contrast. And then you have these, these houses here. And you could say these, these also follow the same rules of big, medium, and small. Uh, there's not as much differentiation between each one of these. You know, we have a small one and we have a medium one, and then we have the big one in the middle. Um, but clearly there is a grouping. There's also the, the element of overlapping. He's overlapping these different elements. Great character design. I, lo I love seeing stuff like this. Like I'm, I'm doing a lot of these as I'm uh, working on my comic book and I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how do I want to draw my characters. And so I'm, I'm doing a lot of stylistic uh, stylistic stuff myself, and I love seeing stuff like this. It's just really cool. Beautiful painting. Uh, again, you know, you have these contrast of elements. You have the orange that's kind of around the, the edges of the piece. And this orange, it's doing what? It's pointing us inward with the shapes of these leaves. But not only that, but it's also adding, I would say, a, a foreground element because you can, you get the sense that they're closer to us than she is, because there's this uh, that depth of field effect that he has by blurring, by blurring the uh, the orange shapes, and that's another element of contrast that he's using here, which is that everything except for the woman and the blue flowers, all are. Uh, all of them have very loose definition. They have very loose uh, edges. The edges of the individual colors, they just kind of bleed together, right? And what I mean by that is you look at something like this, right? From a distance, or something like this, this area, from a distance, they look like they're differentiated. But then as you get closer, you see that these bleed together. These colors here, they bleed together. These different shapes here, they bleed together. They're not really, he's not really drawing anything there. And he saves all the hard edges of these shapes for around the character. As we get closer to the focal point, we see that these have edges. These have much more defined edges. In other words, there is a cl there's a much clearer distinction between this shape of this flower here and the shadow that it casts, the ground around it, the rock over here, her arm, right? And then of course we have this element of the dynamic illustration aspect, which is that it's, it's uh, diagonal, right? It's going like this. <clears throat> Let's go on to the next one. These are some, the rest of these are like some portrait stuff and I'm gonna kind of go through them really quickly, but I really, I, what I really dig about this guy's work is that uh, he's he's got just such an interesting style. Like I've never seen anybody draw hair like this. And it kind of wants, makes me want to draw hair the way that he does it. I like the way that he draws these kind of triangular shapes all throughout the piece. I mean, they're all, like I said, they're all triangles, right? They're all like these diamond-like shapes, or triangle shapes, all throughout the drawing, right? They almost feel like 3D structures. They don't feel like hair. This is a beautiful piece. I really dig this piece. And again, I mean, you, you look at the hair, and the hair just looks, uh, it's just got such an interesting, he's got such an interesting way that he paints and draws hair. 
Oh, another beautiful piece. Wow. Very, very nice. Very strong use of color. Again, he's got these kind of triangular hair shapes going on here. And then as we get closer, we see how he's using the local color of the skin and he's mixing it with the color of the with the color of the and uh, of the light that's coming in. You can see it hitting her skin and bouncing off and creating all these cool effects. All right, let's try to get through these last couple. Beautiful, awesome piece. Again, the contrast, orange and blue, and the way that he's taking that orange and blue, and then he's creating a bridge between those two colors with like a yellow and a green. All of these drawings, they have very strong composition. Some of these tend more towards a style stylistic. This feels way more stylistic than the ones we looked at before. Um, but yeah. Very cool. As usual. Oh, yep. Amazing work. All right, guys, we're going to call it at that. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. If you want to see more of this guy's work, check out the links below in the description. If you want to see, uh, if you want to get some free comic books, I have links in the description from my own, or you can check out my YouTube channel for my comic process as well as other artists that I feature. I do these art of videos, these design theater videos every day. So feel free to subscribe and let me know if there's an artist you would like for me to cover in the, in the comment box below. All right, guys. Thank you. Take it easy.